but good, we're so good glad morning, you're here. Good afternoon, good evening, middle of wherever the night, you are. Wherever, you're, wherever you are. It is now a little after seven here, and in the next about 45 minutes to an hour, we want to just stir up your faith in order for it to be um, successful and productive in obtaining the promises of God, especially concerning your body, your mind, your emotions, whatever yes. needs the touch of God to make bring wholeness, that is what we're here for. Curology every Tuesday evening at 7 o'clock. I want to encourage you, if you're somebody who is believing God for a miracle, then go back also, besides tonight, but go back to previous Tuesday nights uh, right here on Facebook, on the Facebook page of Citadel Churches, and you will have your faith boosted. And there's a lot of practical uh, things that we teach, you know. Uh, faith is a practical thing. It's just God's thing, you know. He's into it. Yeah, it's God's way of operating. It's God's way of being. It's God's way of producing. And so we want to make sure that we, uh, if we want to receive from God, that we are on his terms, that we operate in his ways. And, you know, the Bible says that without faith, it is impossible to please God because those who come to him must believe that he is. Yes. And that is a loaded statement right there. That he is. You know, that he is, that he is uh, real, but also that he is who he is. Yes. And that we don't fabricate another God, but that he, we really come to him for who he is. You yes. know, that's sincerity. And if we seek him, he will reveal himself to us. And of course, through his word. But he wants and wants us to come by faith, believing that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. God is a rewarder. He's not a stingy God. He's not our stingy heavenly father. He likes to give rewards. Yes. I used to love teachers in school that gave rewards. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I didn't like some of the teachers that were just like, do your work and whatever. And, <laughs> you know, I liked, I liked teachers that made things exciting and then there were rewards handed out and that's, that's the best. Well, that's, you know, same with parents, right? If you have a parent who is stingy, that's not fun. But if you have a generous parent, that is exciting because you know when you do well, there are rewards on the other end of it. Well, that's how God is. God likes to give rewards for trusting him, for believing him. And I want to just teach very practically uh, on basically my faith in God so that wow. I, I want to show you how my faith works uh, with God in order to see the results that I, I, I request of God. And so things that I have seen breakthrough in. And that doesn't mean that this is the only way our faith works. Faith is a big topic. Uh, I love to teach on it and I will teach on it for the rest of my life. And I have taught on it for many, 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 many years. And it never gets old because there's a lot of elements to it. First of all, faith is a personal thing. Mm. Just like your relationship with God is personal. Now we can't like make up something you know, for instance, if, you know, when I met my husband, I couldn't make up what our relationship was going to be like because I'm dealing with a real person. Yeah. I have to consider how he is, what he likes, what he doesn't like, you know, where you live. I mean, I can't just say, well, I like, I like Tracy in Florida. So I'm heading over to Florida <laughs> while he's living in California. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah. So you have to be real with your relationship with God and you have to take in consideration who he is, what he does, what he doesn't do, what he likes, what he doesn't like. And so, but it is your relationship with him. It's not my relationship with him, but then there are some things that God gives away in his word uh, because faith is, is God's way of operation. It's how he produces, how he creates and how he interacts with us. And so your faith tonight is gonna to get activated so that you are going to be able to grasp the blessing of, of uh, healing of, from sickness, healing from disease, healing from any ailments, healing from emotional or mental states because 
this is this is the word of God and this is what God has revealed. Uh, faith is a very active thing. That's the first thing I want you to do to get in your heart and mind. Faith is not passive. Faith is not uh, like hope. Faith, you know, hope is something that I, I really want this, I really like this, and I hope I will in the future have it. You know, even with a, a dog, we have one dog, I have one dog. You have a dog. And when she hears that I'm, uh, or when she comes in from outside, she goes potty outside, she's always hopeful that she gets a treat. Why? Because I always give her a treat afterwards. She cries when my children bring her in and they don't give her a treat. <laughs> so then she cries for me to reward her for going potty. This stems back all the way from when she was a little puppy and I was training her not to go indoors, but outdoors to go potty. But here, when she goes outside to go potty, she's hopeful. She's doing it mostly because she knows she's going to get that delicious treat that I give her. I can or, just hear Caesar right now. I'm not going to. Oh, Caesar the, the dog whisperer. Yeah, I'm not Caesar the dog whisperer. I, tr I did follow all of his shows. I think I watched all of them before we had her. <laughs> I don't do everything the same way, but I did learn a few things. I taught her not to be a biter anymore, yeah, so that was good. Yeah, uh, I taught good. her not to destroy our furniture anymore, so That's that was really also good. great. And eventually, I taught her how to go potty outside, which was also very nice. Yes. Ah, that's lovely. But she gets treats. And, you know, and why break... She has hope. She has hope. Why break something that works, right? Yes. But anyway, so that is hope. Uh, that is hope of a future reward. And that's not what faith is. <clears throat> um, I don't speak dog, and she doesn't speak human. So... She's hopeful because she's not sure that it's going to happen. Now, she's more sure when it comes to me. She's absolutely sure that it's not going to happen with this guy. <laughs> <laughs> she is absolutely kind sure. of hopeful when it comes to my three children, what, what, if they remember to do it for her or if they feel like it, right? So different levels of hope. But for me, my relationship with Zoe, there's a lot of faith in me. She has a lot of faith in me because I'm very consistent when it comes to treats. Okay, so, so here's the two different things about Good. hope. Hope is I really want it, but it's out there, and, and I'm not sure yet because I don't see it, and I don't feel it, and I don't have it, right? But faith is something that you're hope lands on so what i usually teach is like uh if you if hope is your uh, uh, flower pot then faith is the is the the pedestal that you put it on it is solid it uh you know it is like a table you put a plant on it it is it is something that is solid and concrete and it's unmovable and so faith Faith, your faith and my faith is not based on a wish, but if it's faith in God, it is based on his character and his promises. Mm -hmm. His character in producing miracles. We know that he has. There are so many testimonials in the Bible, but also in the Old Testament, the New Testament. So we know he likes it. Uh, we know he can do it. We know he was frequent, frequent in healing. We see that in Jesus. Jesus says, if you see me, you've seen the Father. It's not even me that's doing the works. The Father in me is doing the works. Okay, so we know that the Father loves to heal. And Jesus healed all who were oppressed of the devil. And so faith is an amazing thing. Uh, faith is something that is very active. So, so this is the first, first point that I want to uh, teach you today, that as far as my experience um, with faith and also with healing and with the Word of God, is that my faith is active. My faith is not passive hope, just sitting in a chair thinking about it. That's hope, like I wonder what it would be like. That's hope. No, faith is an active thing. The Bible says this in Hebrews chapter 11, 
And I want you to grab your Bible because if you're going to have faith, you need to have the Word of God. You can't have faith uh, without the Word of God. The, the, your faith comes to you by the Word of God. And so it says in Hebrews 11 verse 1, Now faith is the assurance, the confirmation, the title deed. Think about it when you've bought a house. You have the title deed in your hand of the things we hope for. So you're hoping for a beautiful house, but faith is like having the title deed in your hand. Come on. Now, faith is so solid. I know that house is mine because I have the title deed. That's what your faith is. Your faith is based on God's promises, on his word. That's why I said, if you're going to have faith in God, you must have your, the word of God with you. You must have uh, scriptures. Why? Because these are the promises of the Father. These are the words of Jesus. And Jesus says they're like a rock. They're solid. Your hope can land on that. Right? Uh, your faith is that solid rock that your hope can land on. And so it is the uh, title deed of the things we hope for being the proof. Let's say that the proof of the things that we do not see and the conviction of their reality. Faith perceiving as real, and I'm reading the Amplified Version, a real fact, what is not revealed to the senses. So, you know, many people say, oh, well, it didn't happen. Well, uh, your faith doesn't have anything to do with your senses. Your faith in God has to do with what God promised, what God said. God's character of what you know of him by experience, by what he has done in the past for others and what he promises in the word of God. And so this is an amazing thing because your faith, when it comes from the word of God, it is absolute. It's not hopeful anymore, iffy. It is absolutely a fact. And so the only way you can have faith is when your facts come from God. You know, in the natural, if we say we have faith in, because I feel it, I have faith that I have the flu because I feel it, uh, it's, it's very iffy. It's, ba it's based on feelings. Feel feelings come and go. And oftentimes you and I cannot even interpret our feelings. We don't know where they came from what they mean or how soon they go away. That is not the solid ground that we want to base our expectation in God on. It is his words, his character, and he's immovable. So it says here, um, not, it is a, a real fact what is not revealed to the senses. So just because your healing at first is not revealed to your senses, like you may still feel the pain in your shoulder, you may still feel the headache, you may still have the fever. That has not, does not discount your faith because faith is not something that is first revealed to your sen senses. Your faith is your reality. When it comes to you by you giving yourself to, to the word of God, it is so absolute I was telling somebody yesterday, I think it was Tristan, my oldest son, you know, that whenever I have had God's faith come to me for something, and you've done this so many times, even more than me, you say audacious things. It's like, you know, I've told people with cancer, I've told people with, you know, missing kneecap, I've told people with, you know, uh, 12 year long migraines. As soon as I might lay my hands on you, it's going away and it's never, never coming back. Now, I was so absolute in those moments. I, and whenever I'm operating in faith, I'm so absolutely sure that I told my son, it's like I could stake my life on it. I, I, I am so convinced because it's God's faith coming into me, which is more absolute than hope it is more absolute than what i can even sense with my six senses oh, and good. so it's so so firm and it is so solid this is when you know you have faith and it comes to you by giving yourself over to the word of god by eating the word of god reading the word of god meditating on the word of god asking god to show you 
from his mouth, come on, from his words written in the Bible, what he has decided about your body, what he has decided already about your emotions, about your circumstance. And what he has decided is what we call blessings. <laughs> God has decided to be a blessing to you. God decided that over 2,000 years ago. You know, people ask us, you know, do you think God wants to heal me? You know, this, this, this question was answered by what Jesus did on the cross. What Jesus took in his body, the lashes, the, thir the 30 minus one stripe, right? Uh, on his back. Or 39 minus 40 one. Minus yeah, one. Yeah, 40 minus one. So 39 stripes, Jesus took it willingly the punishment for our sicknesses and disease and for our sin and so that question has already been answered by what he did isn't that wonderful so that is such a fact that when i study the book of isaiah and i read what was prophesied and then jesus repeating the book of isaiah later saying today this is fulfilled in your your ears uh, that by his stripes i am healed yes so now this is more solid and more true than any senses that may be appearing in my in my body those are movable but god's word is not movable so this is amazing when you give yourself to the word of god that's number one you have faith that is so solid and immovable that what is movable, which are the symptoms in your body, the pain, whatever condition it is, or in your mind, your, your emotions, that has to move. You know, I love that with a hammer. When a hammer is solid uh, and it hits something that is not solid, come on, what is going to move? Your hammer doesn't fly away. That piece of wood is going to yeah, fly away. That's, right. that's how it is with the Word of God. You give yourself to the word of God. It is a double-edged sword. It is sharper than any other words, right? Sharper than any other sword. Uh, and it cuts through even what is soul and spirit. It can cut through what is the in the invisible realm where nothing else can cut through it. So that's a very exciting thing. So here it says, For by faith, trust, and holy fervor born of faith, the men of old had divine testimony born to them and obtained a good report. And then by faith, we understand that the worlds were framed, come on, fashioned, put in order and equipped for their intended purpose by the word of God. So that what we see right now, you see trees. You see, you know, uh, the elements, you see grass, you see flowers, you see dirt. If you're in the airplane, you can see countries, you can see states of America. What we see was not made by things that are seen by our senses. Taste, smell, sight, right? Touch, all these things. Um, but they were made by the word of God. Now that's powerful. If you can understand that the, the, the Grand Canyon, right? That Australia, that, you know, something as big as the United States of America or Russia, they were made by the word of God. If you can understand that the planets in the universe and the sun and the moon that we see every day were not made by tangible things, uh, you know, that we can see with our eyes, but they were made by the word of God. So, you know, having a Bible, it's not, not just having a book. It is having the elements that formed and created everything. So now how does that apply to you? When you understand that the worlds were framed and made by the word of God, then what God says about your body is just as solid yeah. as that. And so now faith comes when you read that. Faith comes to me when I read that and I ask the Holy Spirit, teach me and show me and impart the faith of God into me. The gift of faith will rise up in me. Now I'm so super convinced that healing is for me, that it is my right as a child of God, that, that Jesus wants to, that he can, 
and especially that he will. Come on, because he's always true to his word. He doesn't change his mind day by day. Oh, he didn't sleep well. He doesn't sleep nor slumber. So he can't wake up with the wrong, you know, foot out of the wrong side of the bed or whatever. So, so I want you to know that, that the word of God, the promises regarding your situation that you're facing right now, or a loved one, the re whatever reason you're here tonight, that, that uh, promise of God is so solid that your situation has to budge. It has to mm. move. I love that so much. So that, that is a powerful thing. Then the second, the second point is receive God in his roles personally to you. So this is just common sense. You know, if we need a plumber, uh, if we need, we need it today, we needed somebody to come over to fix something in the house, right? Uh, we, we, we needed, uh, you know, you need a, a grocery store, whatever you need, whatever profession you need in the world, you need a teacher. It makes common sense to choose one and then make them your teacher your grocer, come on, your whatever it is that you need, whatever profession, whatever quality they have, you have to make them yours. Yeah. It's the same even with parents, you know, there comes a stage in a child's life that they're not even sure if, if, if they want to choose you because you're telling them not to do it, right? Yeah. <laughs> you chose them, you chose to have them, God chose to give them, but then there comes a, an age where the child goes, my parents are the best, right? God gave them to me and they are mine and they become inquisitive. Same with a pastor, right? There comes a time when you rise in maturity spiritually that, that you realize this is my pastor. Come on, for the rest of my life and for my generations, this is my teacher, my pastor, my leader, my spiritual leader. And you make that person your whatever that is. That has to happen with God. If you need him to comfort you, then he needs to become your comforter. Yeah. You can't just say, hey, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use alcohol and drugs uh, most of the time. But sometimes I'll throw a little quick prayer in there. <laughs> no, that doesn't work. That doesn't work with God. He's also jealous. He's Kwana. Right, Jehovah Kwana, he's a jealous God. Uh, he, he compares it to a marriage. <laughs> he compares a person going to other things as an adulterer. So it's the same with, with, your, with your situation that you want to have faith in. You have to have faith in God as the one. And so he is the great physician, the Bible says, Jehovah Rapha. And you have to make him your healer. Isn't that wonderful? So when you say, Lord, I make you my healer, I choose you, you are my healer. Then he goes to town on it. Come on. He starts adding years to your life. He starts working on your body, he starts telling you what to change. Just like a, a doctor in the natural would change your diet, add this to your life, you know, start doing this, don't do that. And, and it's amazing. It's amazing. He wants to walk with you and take responsibility for your health. The same with your emotional health. You know, he wants to be your prince of peace. He wants to be the shepherd. you got to make him your great shepherd. You have to make him your great physician. And when you do that, then you have a relationship with him of recipient. Come on. Um, and, then, and then the third point I want to I say is, Use the weapons that God gave us. This, this is very important because sometimes, well, often we are very passive where we say, well, Lord, you do it. You can do it. Hmm. So I'm just going to sit here and just wait till you do it. But as a child of God, God has given us weapons of resistance. God has given us weapons of war that are wonderful. And so we have to be able to use those and so there's, there's, there's uh, an activity to your faith that when you understand these promises by the stripes of Jesus Christ, I'm healed, then I'm using that weapon that God has given me. I'm using the sword of the Spirit. 
And I wish I could ask every single service that I'm preaching, how many of you have spoken the word of God every day? Come on, how many of you are using your sword every day? I, I want to I wanna challenge people, not because I want to embarrass people or make people feel bad, but I want to challenge the children of God to be, uh, be warriors. Use your sword. Use what God has given you. Use the scriptures. Uh, wield it. Come on. It's, it's a powerful thing. So, so why is this important? Why do we need to use weapons as well? It's because we are under attack in this realm, this earth realm. There's an enemy here. There are plagues here, sickness and disease here. And we have to have weapons of resistance, the shield of faith, right? Yeah. Big shield made up of the word of God, trusting God, the sword of the spirit, which is God's word coming out of your mouth. They produce resistance, a helmet of salvation that says, nope, Corona is not for me because I am saved. Helmet of salvation. I think about my salvation. I see myself as a saved person. I see myself saved from sin, destruction, and disease, which is the punishment for sin. And so you put on all these things, the belt of truth, which we put all your inside, your guts, your feelings, your emotions, you tuck them in with the, with the belt of truth, which says, I will only accept tr the truth of God. Now, when you use these okay. weapons, you come under attack all the time. All of us come under attack. A person of strong faith is not a person that had never has to battle anymore, never has to fight, but it is a person who uses their weapons. So I want you to decide today, I'm a man of faith. I'm a woman of faith, and I'm going to use my weapons. So what happens? You, uh, you're, you're, you wake up in the morning, and you make your peanut butter and jelly sandwich or whatever, or your healthy shake, right? And you're shaking it. And you swallow your shake, and suddenly it doesn't feel nice. Your throat hurts when you swallow. Okay, now you can turn around to your spouse or your kids and go, Oh, I think I'm sick. I think, you know, my throat hurts. Uh-oh, that's one of the <laughs> symptoms, right? The symptoms. So, um... Now, what am I not doing? I'm not using the helmet of salvation. The helmet of salvation says, no, nope, no thanks. That's not for me. I'm the redeemed. I'm the saved. Yes. So this is not for me. This is unlawful activity. That's step number one. Then we go down, down, and we have the shield of faith. God is for me. Come on. He's given me all of his blessings. He's faithful to his word. He has given even his angels charge over me. And we start, we start declaring our faith to God. That's when our sword comes out. And we say, you spirit of infirmity, don't you dare even come in this house or I'm going to slap some anointing oil on you. Come on. <laughs> I, I punish you with the word of God. I tell the devil that a lot. You, you've come and now you're going to get tormented. I am going to go at it all day, not just for myself, but now for others. How dare you? trespass and i take the word of god and as the holy spirit just bubbles up scriptures i declare them over uh, against the enemy and i punish him and torment him to and he has to flee you know i believe the word of god i believe that when i resist the devil like that he has to flee yeah. and why do you say devil it's just natural it's just like cells no he is the the author of, of, of those things because he used the disobedience of Adam and Eve to, to bring disease and all those things as punishment legally, right? But now it's not legal anymore. I'm the forgiven one. I, I have the blood of Jesus that washes me. I, I don't hold anything against anyone. I walk in forgiveness. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I'm washed clean. So there's no reason for me to be punished with a sore throat. Come on, that's a punishment for sin. And so I resist him steadfastly in the faith, the Bible says. Resist him steadfastly in the faith. What does that mean? That means there's only one outcome here. And that's that the devil's going to get spanked and I'm going to be victorious. I'm not going to accept this. Now, 
I, I can tell you that there's times that I've been tricked into giving myself to too long of a thought about these symptoms. And I'm rising to the place where my resistance and rebuttal to all symptoms is much faster. You know, sometimes, you know, you think, oh my goodness, why is my, my, why are my glands swollen? Maybe I didn't sleep long enough. Oh, maybe, man, I ate too much sugar. That's always my thing. If I ate sugar, right? It's like, oh, I kind of did this to myself. No, my husband had to tell me, honey, there's people that eat whole like pies and they don't even get sore throat. So it <laughs> doesn't mean that you have to get sick because you ate one, one piece of licorice. Come on now. And so don't let the devil trick you. He's, he's a tricker, right? He's a tricker. So stand firm on the word of God and use your sword, wield that sword and speak against it. We resist it because we're safe. We put our trust in God. And now this is, a, this is maybe a new one for you. The last point I wanted to share, but we see this a lot in ministry is uh, when we invite other people to come and why don't you, your friend come and you pray for your friend. We're teaching people how to pray for the sick as a believer. And then Tracy will say, okay, now you say to that growth uh, on her throat, in Jesus name, go. Okay, so then, so then they're like, okay. And then, you know, he'll let them maybe put their hand on the throat if they want to, whatever, put your hand on her throat. Now you say it, and then say it strong, you always say. So in the name of Jesus, lump in the throat, growth in the throat, go. And then they stand there looking at the friend, and the friend is like, hmm, still, you know, a little bit, or they're feeling it. And then, and then they want to go, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, go, go. And they keep wanting to touch it. And my husband always has to say, no, 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 just stand back. Because listen, once you have put your faith in God and you've acted on his promises and his authority, now you're done. You are done. You're You've released it. And now you stand back. My husband always says, just stand back and watch what he does. <laughs> That's so hard. It makes me want to go into service right now. I know, <laughs> uh, because this is when the miracle starts happening. And I love this so much. How do you do this at home? When, once, you, once you praise God for his promises, you stand on the rock of his word, you're actively participating in having the helmet on, the shield up, come on. You're resisting the symptoms steadfastly in the faith. And you take the sword of the spirit, the word of God, and you declare scriptures out loud. You spank the devil. You spank that sickness with the sword. Come on. <laughs> then it's your, your turn to now stop. And you understand that this is now when your faith is being released to God about the situation. And all you do is just thank the Lord and watch. Watch what he does the whole time. We just thank the Lord. Thank you for healing me. Thank you, Lord. I don't go back to, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I command you to go sore throat in the name. No, no. Now you're not in faith anymore. Now you're trying to work it. You don't need to work it. You use this, the example. You don't, once you say, turn the light switch on, you don't have to keep flicking it up and down, up and down, up and down. You just touch it one time and then... The, we trust the power on the other side of the button to do its work. And that's the same with God. Trust him. If your faith is in God, then you trust him after you've activated your faith in God towards something very specific, then you wait and you just watch. You thank the Lord that he is doing it. Because every time you ask, so every good. time you pray, Love he it. hears. And he is activated. Now that's how it works. For so good, fun, fun. I love this. I think life. I think it's really really wonderful. We are we're in contending against the enemy. Yeah. For for so many things that he's up to, we just want to punch him in the face for all of them. Yes. <laughs> it's like there's it's all there's awful. nothing that is lawful that he's up to. And no. today I want to just tag on by faith. Yes. Through uh, scripture that I feel like is is a scripture that I meditate on and I and I speak it out, but sometimes I need to look at it. 
yes, and uh, look, at look at it. And I want to just go and look at it with you tonight. And I think it goes along with this this spirit of faith that's in what you're you're declaring. This is probably the most quoted scripture from uh, Oral Roberts that I I think I know of. Oh yeah, uh, John, John ten ten. And today I want to talk about uh, the latter part of it. But it says the thief. Uh, does not come except to steal, to kill, and to destroy. You know, it's funny because that first word, the thie- the, the the steal, is the word klepto. <laughs> he's oh, a, he's, kleptomaniac. He's a kleptist. It, it, he has it, to it's, have it, it. It's the Greek, Greek form of kleptist, but it, that's where klepto comes from. He's like a kleptomaniac. He can't help but steal. He has to. It's in his nature. It's in his it's in his nature. He's, he's such a criminal. To take what is he's, not his. He's, and he's, and he's, he's like a... You know, one day we came we came back from <laughs> someplace. We were driving. We I think we we're coming back from service, and we we you well the kids always want pets, right? So somehow we adopted a cat, an abandoned, starving cat. <laughs> yes, he was very skinny. <laughs> somehow we adopted a cat, and the cat was you know just kind of first it was in the bushes, mm-hmm. and then they started feeding it, and they put food out. You know, first you know the cat food on the front porch and it would come and eat. Well, one day we're coming home and there's one of those raccoons at the dish. And the raccoon (laughs) saw the lights, looked up like this, like they, however, you know, they hold, they stand up on their hind end and they hold their, and then they saw us. And then as they were looking, looking at us, they just kept, they kept, they kept Their stealing. Hands kept just going. kept going like this. They had to keep on stealing no matter what. <laughs> it's like a little klepto. It just couldn't handle it. Little, 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 little rat. And then a whole family came later. Oh yeah, and then the they're same. all like, they're all like, but this is how the devil is. He can't help it. If you leave something dangling out there, you leave something out there. You leave something. Yes, it's not in, secure. You leave something that hasn't been secured. Something that hasn't been put into. Yeah, a safe place. If you haven't brought it into, in time something's trying to attack my life. The first thing I do, the first thing I do is I I say, oh, I apply the blood of Jesus to it. The blood of Jesus immediately Bice puts a it. covering <laughs> over it and, it, and it and it ties it up into a safe place. Yeah. The blood of Jesus is the safest place on the earth. Yeah. Now the blood of Jesus, you know, the Bible says, by His stripes we are healed. The stripes are the healing virtue. But the thing that separates us, that, that d- divides us from the things of the world, from the devil, mm-hmm. from a strategy that removes him. And remember, we put the, we put the blood on the, on the doorpost for the sake of keeping him from having entrance. So anytime something's coming, you have to go ahead and put a security, put a security gate on it, put, put, a, put a security alarm system on it, and that's going to happen through the blood of Jesus. Make sure the blood of Jesus is on whatever you're fighting for, whatever you're contending for, so that the the symptoms or the problem, his infection of it, his stealing of it, immediately stops, immediately stops. And that's going to be something that you can do. That's easy for all of us to do, is just to say, I put the blood of Jesus on it. I'm going to just yes. apply the blood of Jesus. And that's my first thing when, when it comes to faith. For me, when it comes to healing, the first thing I, I do is, if I know I can put the blood of Jesus on it, it's, it's, it signifies to to me, heaven, earth, under the earth, to the devil, to all around in the spirit, that I believe that this belongs to Jesus yes. and that it doesn't belong to anything else. It doesn't, belong, right. to, it doesn't belong to anything, nothing else. It, everything else is a trespasser and should be immediately arrested. That's should right. be immediately uh, you know, taken under the authority, of the, the, the authority of the kingdom of God in heaven. Yeah. So when you know that, that you know he's a klepto, he's, he's <laughs> fully... He's fully a, a klepto. Yeah. And then it says that the word, the next thing is he's, he steals and he kills. Uh, the killing is interesting because it comes from a, the same word that's used in Greek for sacrifice. Whoa. He is, he actually, when someone is being murdered, when someone's being killed, it's now in God's mind and in the earth's mind as a sacrifice. That's why when uh, the blood was crying out with Cain and Abel, uh, the blood was crying out because it was supposed to be a sacrifice if blood was shed. Yeah. But if blood is being shed and it's not actually a, a, an official sacrifice, it's still considered a sacrifice, but yes. just of a demonic a de- demonic nature. Mm-hmm. And so the enemy is going to come and he wants to sacrifice you. Yeah. He wants to sacrifice your life, God. your family. So we don't let him just have his way. If he, if you see him trying to to run off with your family member, you see him trying to run off with your child, you go after it like you're saving someone from a sacrifice. I remember when I first got saved, when I first got saved, 
I remember October. I remember October was an important month for me in, in when I got saved because I never knew before I got saved the the kind of demonic activity that happens in the real world, not just Harry Potter, not just kids <laughs> running around, but in the real world, yeah. Rebecca Brown, I think her name, Rebecca Rebecca Brown, she wrote this book on, you know, she came out of Satanism, yeah, the yeah. witchcraft and all this. She started to reveal some of the things that happened. Same in Europe, yeah, we have lots of testimonies. But then you realize the, the most active month of, of the, these witches Sacrifice. and sacrifices is October. Mm -hmm. And I remember staying, I would stay in the house on October 31st and I would just pray all day and pray all night to save people from sacrifice. Yeah. I would just spend, I mean, I literally, that was my assignment on that day. I became an intercessor to believe God to stop sacrifices. I had flashes of this thing, flashes of that. Yeah. And I would just prophetically get these, in, these inspired thoughts and I would pray uh, the covering and the peace and the, and the goodness and the blood of Jesus. His goal is okay, now he knows he has entrance he knows he has entrance and if he has entrance he can come back again because he yeah. has entrance and until you say there is no entrance here then he's going to keep on trying to get you to the place of whatever that place is until he can get you to the place where he can sacrifice you there's a lot of people the cancer is attacking because there is this spirit of death that's trying to work and yeah. so you need to know that it's not just the simple oh i made it out you got to know, you got to know, Always have your uh, it, it, <laughs> it, 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 he, he needs a boundary line yeah. that is so unpenetrable yeah. that he will give up on it. Yeah. If you give him entrance, it's like that little bandit, that little bandit that was raccoon. in the front by himself, that little ra raccoon. Then months later, it brought another bigger raccoon. And then, then it brought a whole little tribe of raccoons. Yeah. And I couldn't get, I couldn't get rid of those things. I mean, it was like, as long as we had the cat out there, the, the, the food was there. It was just like, I was trying to. They would hiss at you when I was, you tried to open the door. <laughs> I was like, man, I'm about to hit you with this. <laughs> and they would take off so fast. But you gave a little bit of entrance, it keeps coming back because that's yeah, what a thief does. A thief does. goes back to where it's been good. Take good. Him out. Then it then, but the enemy knows if I can get in to be a thief, then I'm going to get in and be a, some a thief that is able to kill. Yeah. I'm going to bring you. I'm going to make you my sacrifice. Now, everybody, yes. I want you to get this. Every mm -hmm. thing that the enemy is doing, he's trying to sacrifice us yes. because he knows on the altar of God we have laid out our lives as a living sacrifice. Yeah. When we lay that, when he takes our life then it's not a living sacrifice. It's a sacrifice that has been stirred on by the in enemy and by the demonic. And so I refuse and you refuse, we refuse, we refuse to it. be sacrificed. Yes. You're not going to sacrifice us in the no. name of Jesus. No. We will lay our lives down as Amen. a living sacrifice to be completely, completely usable yes. material for God. Poured out, poured out on him. Amen. Yes, we agree with Amen. The Lord. Amen. 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 All right. So the next thing is destroy. Then he says, um, still kill and destroy his. And that means to abolish it. Like you had never, ever lived. Like you never, ever lived. Mm -hmm. It's really, it's really terrible. It's really terrible because the, the thing that we, we don't know in, in the English about Abel is the fact that Abel died before he could accomplish anything. So it's like he never lived. It's like he never accomplished anything. It's like he was completely wiped out by a demonic sacrifice. That's what the enemy wants. He wants the, the he, he was, and, and it literally uses in, in Hebrew later in Hebrew, uh, talking about vanity, vanity of vanities. The word vanity is, is the word associated to Abel, Abel, Abel. It's, it's now his word, his name, Abel has become a, a proverb that when and you live a empty. vanity life an empty life you have nothing and don't so the enemy not only wants to steal from you he wants to kill from you but he wants to make your life a vain life a life where it didn't have any meaning where you had no substance where you had no value and even though abel was the most liked amongst we like him we're like we root for him but he was taken out by the enemy and the enemy used his brother to take him out because we know that Jesus said, God, God said, <laughs> Jesus, Jesus said to Cain, you know, if the, well, if sin lays one. at the door yeah. and right and right, you have to understand that God said, what is this? Sin is at the door. 
waiting. But you must. But you must resist. You must over. Oh, you must overcome it. Yeah. And so you have to understand that that was showing me clearly and shows you and I clearly that that wasn't Cain by himself active. That was the work of the flesh and it was the work of the devil that actually wiped out his brother. Yeah. Not just stealing, not just killing, but destroying him. That full activity of these three things was yeah. manifest in the Cain and Abel story. Yeah. And when you realize that Abel is now vanity of vanities, he doesn't have a life. He didn't have a family. He didn't have, he didn't accomplish anything. He didn't do anything. He literally has become a proverb of vanity because this is what the devil has done. And that, that seems unfair, doesn't it? It seems unfair that he was the one that got the, that was attacked. That was, that was, mm -hmm. and, and he was, but this is the thing. We feel sorry and instead of getting even. I don't know if I want, if that's the right. Don't feel sorry, get even. Yeah. Don't feel sorry for him. Do yeah, something with your life mm -hmm. and make sure that you don't allow any, any substance, anything in your body that's bringing destructive power. Don't allow sickness, don't allow infirmity, don't allow drugs, don't allow alcohol, don't allow things that are tearing you up. I, I have, someone says, someone says, Tracy, but I have the grace of God to, to drink. And I said, that's right, you do, you can, but, can do but, anything. but don't come asking for prayer for this, for the, for the deterioration of your liver. That's, that's, if you knowingly do it, then right? You because, the because that's the, that's the thing is you have allowed the enemy to get in there. Yes. You have liberty to do anything. You have liberty. It's all lawful, but not all of it is expedient. No. And so what, at what point do you actually have the privilege of getting prayer for expedient, something that good. was actually not expedient. The Bible says, do what's expedient. That's what Paul's talking about. You can do anything, but do what's expedient. Don't do what's li just liberating. Yes. Whatever freedom. Don't celebrate some freedom. That's a destructive work. Which Amy, really I'm, rebellion. <laughs> I'm getting into that, but I didn't, I didn't want to. Now this, that wasn't yeah. my intention, but it was needed for someone. Yes. All right, here we go. Amen. Uh, so then it says here is, so you guys tracking, this is yep. the Cain and Abel story is our backdrop. And we're looking at stealing, killing, and destroying. First thing is the stealing, killing, and destroying. This is what he wants. He wants to actually steal from you. He wants to kill from you and he wants to destroy. What does he want to do? He wants to steal, kill, and destroy. All of those things are affecting Zoe. All those things are affecting your life, your life. Anything that's affecting your life that's to do with stealing, killing, and destroying, God has given you the power to actually, f to combat it, to be victorious over it, to be, to be, to be um, dominant over it. And it says, and I've come that they may have life. life. That's that word Zoe. That, that word life means this, the state of one who is possessed of vi vital vitality and animation. You're animated, you're alive, you're vital, you're, your vital organs, everything's working. See, we need to know that there is a life that is abundant life. He says that not only I have come that you may have life. That's the first level of life, Zoe, that you would have that state of abundance, that state of, of, of possessed, you're possessed with vitality. That means possessed with something, possessed with vitality. Body, soul, and spirit, possessed with vitality. Yeah. There is no way that you're failing. No way that anything is faltering. No way that anything is falling apart. Everything is pro progressing. Everything is moving forward. Everything is growing. Everything is dominating. You're possessed with vitality. Wow. Everything is animated. There's nothing that's too stiff. There's no more stiff joints. You're animated. Amen. There's no more pains in your body that you can't move. You're animated. There's no more limitation in your thinking, trying to think of, well, trying to come up with thoughts. You're animated. Everything is fully alive and fully moving and fully active. I wish someone would just say yes and amen yes on this and, and just take some of that. I want you to know it's fully animate, animated. You should be fully movable, shakable, animation, yeah. motion. There should be no limitation in your motion. If you have any limitation in any motion, any of your joints, I say arthritis be healed in the name of Jesus. You're fully animated, fully animated. So then he says that there's a, there's a word here, but not only just life that they may have, I give that I may have, they may have life and that life that I'm given, the regular life that I, that comes from me, that life is going to produce in them more abundantly. Yeah. A more an abundant life, life in that life more abundant. And so God wants you to have an abundance of life. Now, what does that mean? That, that, that's the, the, you know, that's the two words that are brought together. Uh, one word is, is peri, which is the word we get the para church, para church or a para legal. A para legal is someone who stands next to legal counsel. 
right? There's someone who's on the, then, then we get the word in the Holy Spirit, the paraclete, someone who is on the, be on beside them. But you know what the word really means? If you go para, it means it goes before them. Wow. On the on the go be, right. to be they, on them. In court, they step forward and speak on their behalf. They step. They're before them. They're yeah. in front of them. They're ahead of them. Yeah. They're they're the ones that are preparing the way for them. They're the one that's actually breaking down the limitations. They're the one. They're the para. So this is para Zoe that you may have para Zoe. Zoe will go in front of you in life instead of Zoe catching up. I want you to believe wow. that God is. So we are always believing for healing. That means Zoe's catching up on me. But I want to believe that I have para Zoe's that that Zoe is going in front of me and I'm always catching up to the life that's in front of me. That is always an abounding life, always an excessive life. Look at this word that says that it's, it's parasos and it says this. The sense of beyond, super abundant in quantity, super, superior in quality, and it says excessive, to be excessive. Now, I love that it says in the middle of this, it has this word vi violently. Now, you have to understand that the enemy's strategy is violence. Yes. This is not a passive thing stealing from you. A thief stealing from you is a violent activity. Right. Uh, some, uh, 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 someone trying to kill you, that's a violent activity. You have to understand that that violence, that violence needs a response. Yeah. There is something powerful about the responding with the same or greater violence and knowing that the abundance of God is a violent activity Yeah. to go. If you're going to step into abundance, abundance of health, not just I want to get healed, but I'm stepping into an abundance of health where I never get sick. I'm going to yes. step into abundance of health because where it can't touch me. For. Man, I tell you what, we got to believe that if we believe we're going to heaven. We have to believe in this day and age that there is going to be such violent power within yeah. us that it supersedes any violent activity. Do you know that you have one inside of you, a parasos, an anointing that is associated to one that's standing next to you that's greater? Woo! Yeah. He goes before you. I'm telling you, I could preach this. I could be in the service right now. We are in the service. Yes, we are in the service. I just want to put my hands on somebody. Come on. Put my hands on you and breathe on you and release some of this violent, abundant Zoe on your life so that you can be set free and walk in. And it says to be preeminent, to be preeminent. That's a powerful, that's a powerful word. Abundance. Superior, supreme in it, superior. And then it says this statement that's right there, right in the middle of this, the definition of, of parasols. It says, exceedingly, abundantly, above. That's right. Now, that's we know that. That sounds me. familiar to yes. me. That sounds like an Ephesians. Yes. Sounds like Ephesians, which means I've got to read it. Ephesians 3, 17, it says, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. Yeah, what she preached on faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love <laughs> may be able to comprehend with all the saints, all with of every, uh, every one of us. There's not something that I should comprehend that you don't comprehend no, that we, we us. should all comprehend. This is for all of us for the, what is the width, the length, the depth, the height to know the love of Christ. Now, th does Christ love us only to heal us or does he love us enough to protect us? To protect us. He can protect us. To love Christ, which passes our knowledge. So how do we comprehend what is too big to know? I love it. It's by experience. It's experience. I have to experience it. Do you experience it I know love? you don't give me high fives, but do something. Do something cool. I mean, a punch. Okay. When, you, when you experience love, you can believe it, right? You can't understand it. So, so just to finish off before yes. we have to jump into our healing love of room. Christ. The love of Christ, which passes our knowledge. That word knowledge is the same word as science. It, it, God wants to give you so much love that blows your science. Yeah. It messes your science completely yeah. up. That you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above. There it is. Exceedingly that abundantly is abundantly above. Abundantly, which overflows and above. Which is that same word. That life, that abundant life that's coming to you, that's that parasis that comes to you yes. that is to make you beyond what you can know. So beyond what you can ask, think, or even imagine. Even imagine. So not just the healing from cold, but as much health as you can even imagine. And then 
It goes beyond it. So if only <laughs> if your greatest imagination is if I can only get healed from this, then that's what you'll live in. Yeah. If your imagination is if I can if I can lay hands on someone and they get healed from this, yeah, then that's what you'll live in. Everybody that I then pray that, for that will that will be the uh, the the para that goes before you. Yes. Now, if you can imagine that everybody that I pray for and then everybody they pray for, they get activated, then that's yeah. the para that will go before you. Yeah. And then if you can believe and you can imagine, right? If it's working inside of you, your imagination you says that I will never be touched by this. That's right. It can't touch me like John G. Lake. If it touches me, it dies because I have focus. more violence in me than it has in it. Yes. Now, when I'm you re focused. when you can imagine that, when you can imagine that, then the para, the parasis goes before you and gives you that kind of life. Well, we love you guys. We want to hear your testimonies. Yes, please. And as uh, everything starts manifesting, the power of God manifesting in your bodies, your souls, your minds. Let us know, DM us uh, or write it in the comments because it is such a blessing of, of faith in God for other people who also need to be healed. Yes, exactly. We'll see you next time and keep the faith. Amen.